Now let's talk about Conversation C. In Conversation C, Sally and Dennis are in the museum and they observe a steel statue sitting on a bench. Now if you observe something, that means you look at something and you study it for a long time. That's right. Now if it's a steel statue, you know it's not moving, it's just sitting there still, but it's on a bench, something you can sit on. Well, Sally says it's amazing how Jumi can transform a cold material like stainless steel into something so warm and full of affection. So she has a lot of feelings about the artwork that she looks at. And she thinks it's because of the artist being able to transform a really hard, cold material into something really warm. Now, if you can transform something, it means you're changing something completely from one form into another. Some people like to transform rooms in their houses. Maybe it used to be a bedroom and then they did some work on it and they transformed it into a study where you can go and read and study for school, perhaps. Perhaps. And in this case, Ju Ming was able to transform stainless steel into something very warm and full of emotion. Stainless steel, of course, is a kind of metal that we use to make knives and forks, mm -hmm. for example. And we usually don't think of stainless steel as being something we want to make a sculpture with. We usually use clay or wood, kind of soft and warm kinds of substances. Mm -hmm. Well, Dennis helps his friend. He says, you know, Jim means a master. He's very, very good at trying to work with different materials. So he'll try to use materials that other artists don't, like stainless steel. His secret is, is that he works with a substance until he feels like it can talk. Now, we know that substances don't talk to us. A substance is any kind of material a solid, a liquid, or a gas, those are all substances. They can't really talk to you, but he feels like they can communicate as he works with them longer and longer. You can see he's a special kind of artist. Mm -hmm. And this museum is also child-friendly, so in case the children are kind of getting bored of the sculptures, well, they can go to the Children Art Center, and Sally and Dennis walk over there, and Sally says, well, why are we stopping here? This area is for kids. It's <laughs> for children. We're grown people. Why would we want to come here? Yeah, and he, she says, uh, this is just for kids. And he says, not necessarily. This is a phrase we use to mean, oh, it's not always true. It's sometimes true. It's possibly true. But it's not always certain that it's true. Not necessarily. So, you always eat dinner at 6 o'clock p.m., Tom, right? Not necessarily. Sometimes I eat at 5, or sometimes as late as 8 o'clock. So here, not necessarily means it's not necessarily that way. It could be one way, or it could be the other. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily here is our sentence for you for today. So let's take a closer look. Sentence for you. Not necessarily. Do you think Corey would like this hat for his birthday? Not necessarily. He might think it's ugly. this shirt. Would he like it? It might not necessarily be his favorite color. Well, do you have a suggestion then? Hmm, look over there. That would be perfect. Are you sure he'd like a toy robot? <laughs> not necessarily, but I'd love it. You can buy it for my birthday. <laughs> Now these activities at the center are for everyone, not just for kids at the Children Art Center. 
So that's kind of fun. Ju Ming hopes that visitors will get inspired when they go there and create their own artwork. Now, we wanted to talk a bit about the difference between hope and wish. How do you know when to use one and when to use the other? Well, we use wish when we talk about things that aren't true or not possible or really unlikely. For example, oh, oh, I wish I could win the lottery and win lots of money. You wouldn't say, I hope I win the lottery. It's not really going to be possible. Hope is something that is possible, that it could happen. Hey, Tom, uh, I hope you're not late work for work tomorrow. <laughs> That's a silly thing to say, Stephanie. You know that I'm always on time. You're never late. I'm just kidding. Well, I wanted to remind everyone not to use wish plus that. When you want to say that you hope something will happen in the future, for example, I wish that you have a great time at your party tonight. Ooh, that is wrong and sounds terrible. I hope that you have a good time at your party tonight is the correct way. Mm -hmm, right, so here again, Zhu Ming hopes that his visitors will get inspired and create their own art. So he hopes that they will be inspired and that they too will want to make some art themselves. Yeah, that's really cool. Well. They continue looking around and uh, they try the water painting, which sounds fun. Sally picks up a brush and tries to paint. Well, Dennis says, bravo, which means what a great job. I think you're starting to get your groove back. Now, this word groove is a funky word. It means a beat in a popular piece of music. But if someone says, oh, I see you're getting your groove back, it means you're kind of getting your inspiration back and you feel like you're being more successful in life again. Mm -hmm, right, so your groove just means how good you are at something and you're able to start doing something well again. Mm -hmm. And Sally steps back and reveals her work. To reveal just means to show somebody something that was hidden before, to let people know it's there. That's right. Well, she wants to know what her friend thinks, and he says it's not bad, which means it's pretty good for someone who's not a kid. <laughs> she says, all right, you got me. You saw through me. She says, I guess we're all kids at heart. If you're a kid at heart, it means even though you're an adult or grown up, you still have fun, and you have those fun feelings inside that continue as as you get older, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And in order to remember this special time, Dennis snaps a photo and they walk on. So here's snap. Uh, that's a word we use to describe when somebody takes a picture with a camera, to snap the camera or to take a picture. You could also snap your fingers if you want to get someone's attention. And someone who's going to take your attention now is our Chinese teacher. Let's listen for a few minutes. <laughs> 